Hi. I'm going to start my talk with a short personal story. Many years ago, I was part of a prestigious project. It was a project where we were about to create astonishing results and to revolutionize the field with our new software. And I remember specifically walking out of a certain meeting. It was a meeting with the decision makers in this project. And the problem was that I was about to present my viewpoints of the current state of the project. And they were based on my knowledge and prior experiences. And they were the opposite of the viewpoints of these decision makers. They saw the project as blue skies, sunshine, but I saw the risks of dark clouds approaching unless we changed how the project was set up and the way we built our software. Maybe I wasn't the only one to see these risks, but I was the only one to give voice to them. So it resembled the short tale of the emperor's new clothes. These decision makers were three men, all talented, intelligent and respected. So it was a tough meeting. I was nervous and anxious when I walked in there. And when I walked out of that meeting, I realized that this was a culture of low trust. They didn't want other opinions. And I also realized that from this point on, I had nothing to contribute with to this project. My name is Jonas Persson. I'm a Scrum Master. And this brings us to the topic of organizational trust. The reason for sharing this story was to create empathy. Because now you will have higher levels of oxytocin in your blood. Oxytocin is a hormone that makes you feel human. It is beautiful because it increases the likelihood to trust others, to be generous, to bond with others. The effect lasts, lasts approximately 30 minutes. So during this time frame, it's easier to connect and to work with others. I came across this topic in a blog post by Paul J. Sack, an academic researcher who has studied this. And it, it was the results that got me interested because the results are actually astonishing. Employees in high trust cultures compared to those in low trust cultures show much higher values for engagement, joy at work, job satisfaction, productivity, job retention, and life satisfaction, and lower levels for sick days and burnout. So these findings have a big economic impact. And his research shows that you can create an organizational culture and a leadership culture that produces lots of opportunities for the release of oxytocin. And here is how it relates to Agile, because several of the Agile ways of working promotes high trust cultures. For example, self-organizing teams, teams that themselves can choose how to solve problems having common goals, for example, sprint goals, that makes the team that they need to collaborate with one another will release oxytocin in the members. Having servant leader leaders, that is leaders that sets the direction and then supports the team to get there and transparency, to be open and transparent when sharing information. These are some of the findings he presents in his white paper. 
And my story is just in line with his research. It shows that it, it is much more pleasant to work in organizations with high trust compared to working in cult organizations with low trust. And I think this is something that we all should strive to work for, to create cultures of high trust, because it will gain everyone. Thank you for watching. So the question of today, how is the organizational trust within your organization? Please comment down below and subscribe for more videos from us.